Have you ever wondered what causes the ground beneath us to shake violently? It's all about the tectonic plates, vast rocky slabs that make up Earth's outer shell. These plates are always in motion, albeit slow, drifting atop the semi-fluid layer beneath them. Now imagine a rubber sheet being stretched. It extends a little, doesn't it? But apply too much force, and snap, it breaks. This is similar to what happens with our Earth's crust. The tectonic plates with all their slow motion wandering sometimes get stuck at their edges due to friction. But the rest of the plate keeps moving, building up stress at the stuck points. Over time, this stress distorts the rocks at the edges, creating strain. And just like the rubber sheet, when the strain becomes too much, the rocks snap and the pent-up energy is released. Therefore, when the Earth's crust finally gives way, it releases energy in the form of seismic waves. This is what we call an earthquake. But did you know, not all earthquakes are the same? Indeed, the way our planet rumbles and grumbles varies significantly depending on the type of seismic waves generated. Let's start with primary waves, or P waves. These are the fastest, racing through the Earth's interior like a sprinter on a track. They cause particles to move back and forth in the same direction as the wave, kind of like how a slinky stretches and compresses when you give it a push. Next up are secondary waves, or S waves. They're slower than P waves, and they cause particles to move perpendicular to the wave direction. Imagine giving a slinky a side-to-side -side shake, that's how S waves move. Finally, we have surface waves. These waves move along the Earth's surface, causing most of the shaking and damage during an earthquake. They're like the grand finale of a seismic event, bringing the terrifying power of earthquakes to the surface. Each type of wave behaves differently, but together they create the shaking we experience during an earthquake. Some places, unfortunately, are more prone to earthquakes than others. One such prominent area is the Pacific Ring of Fire, an arc stretching from New Zealand, along the eastern edge of Asia, north across the Aleutian Islands of Alaska, and south along the coast of North and South America. This area is home to most of the world's earthquakes and about 75% of the world's active volcanoes. The San Andreas Fault in California and the Himalayan Fault Line are other notable hotspots. The reason for their earthquake-prone nature lies in the tectonic activities beneath the Earth's surface. These regions sit on the borders of tectonic plates which are constantly moving, albeit slowly. When these plates collide or slide past each other the accumulated stress is released, causing earthquakes. We have with us a geologist who can delve a bit deeper into why these areas are more susceptible. Living in these areas requires a higher level of preparedness due to the elevated risk of earthquakes. The strength of an earthquake is often referred to in terms of magnitude, but what does that really mean? To answer that, we need to understand two key terms, the Richter scale and the moment magnitude scale. The Richter scale, developed in the early 1930s, measures an earthquake's amplitude by tracking the seismic waves it generates. However, it's not always accurate for very large or distant quakes. That's where the moment magnitude scale steps in. It calculates the total energy released by an earthquake, making it more reliable for assessing the strength of large-scale seismic events. In essence, both scales are logarithmic. This means that each whole number increase on the scale represents a tenfold increase in measured amplitude and roughly 32 times more energy release. For instance, a magnitude 6 earthquake releases 32 times more energy than a magnitude 5. So, the next time you hear about an earthquake's magnitude, you'll know exactly what it means. While we cannot predict when an earthquake will occur, we can certainly prepare for it. The myth of earthquake prediction is just that, a myth. Despite advancements in technology, seismologists have yet to pinpoint the exact moment when an earthquake will strike. But don't let this uncertainty scare you. Preparedness is our strongest ally. Knowing what to do before, during, and after an earthquake can greatly increase your chances of survival. Start by creating an emergency plan. Identify safe spots in your home such as under sturdy furniture or against an inside wall. Ensure that all family members know the drop, cover, and hold on method. Don't forget to assemble an emergency kit, including essentials like water, food, medications, and important documents. Lastly, familiarize yourself with local emergency services and evacuation routes. Remember, the key to surviving an earthquake is to plan ahead, stay calm, and know your safety measures.